Okay. So, in the short time we have left, I just want to quickly run through the next topic we'll be covering. It is called continuity. Definition. Definition. F of x is said to be continuous. At point x equals a, if the following equation holds. I believe this was on the bonus. So there's a certain equation that tells you something is continuous at a point. Or does anyone know the equation? Yeah. Is it f of x equals x? No. Or f of x equals f of x, sorry. f of x equals f of x? Yeah? The limit of, as f of x approaches a equals f of a. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So I wrote that down before, but I quickly ran over it. But now we're officially looking at this. That is what continuity means. That if this limit, if this equation is true, the limit as x approaches a of the function f of x, if that is equal to the output of the function at that point, we say that the function is continuous at that point. Definition. f of x is called continuous. So there's a distinction between continuous at a certain location, continuous at x equals a, versus continuous, like in general. Right? We, f of x is called continuous if it is continuous at every point in its domain. So if for every point in the domain of the function, this equation is true, we call that a continuous function. So we say it's a continuous function means no matter what point you pick on that graph, this, this equation is going to work out. Um, but at specific points, um, that equation works out, means it's continuous at that specific point. Um, definition. f of x is so to call something not continuous we use the prefix dis so say discontinuous if it is not continuous so not continuous we call it discontinuous or you might call it uh, you might say f has a discontinuity. And there are many types of discontinuities, but we're not really going to get into that, more or less. But these are the basic definitions. Um, f is continuous at a certain point if this equation holds at that point. If this equation holds for every point in the domain of the function, the function is called continuous in general. At any point where this equation does not hold, the function is said to be discontinuous there. Now, let's talk about the intuitive. What does continuity mean intuitively? Because the word, the root word, continuous, it, it kind of has an intuitive meaning to it. And we actually follow up on that meaning. This means f has no holes, gaps, breaks, jumps, etc. cetera, um, in theory. sketch it without lifting the pencil off the page. Now one thing I, I do want to say here is this is not a definition. This is intuitively what it means. Okay. So I actually did fine. What does it mean for a function to be continuous? I can draw it without lifting off a pencil. That's not, not a definition. Right? I just want you to see that this is the it's a little better. Not a definition. Right? 
but intuitively that's what it means. So if you if you you if you're if you're sketching a function continuous at a it means you can like just draw the function passing through the point it passes through at a. It'll be filled in and there's no jump, there's no gap, there's no disruption. You can just kind of flow through and just keep going, right? That's continuous, that's um, intuitively what it means. Let's look at not continuous. Now there are many ways for you to not be continuous. Um, so, for example, this guy is not continuous at A, right? Because there's a hole. I literally have to lift up my pencil to, to move to the other side. I have to like jump over that little spot. Or, um, maybe I continue here, but then I have to jump up here and do that. That's called the jump discontinuity. You don't need to know that. Um, so that's not continuous. You can also have something like that. That's not continuous. You could have some sort of asymptote. So anytime there's any disruption or break or hole or jump or a gap or anything that kind of messes with you being able to draw the function without lifting up your pencil, the function is discontinuous. And it turns out, curiously enough, this one little equation actually captures all of that um, in its scope. It turns out that whenever this equation holds, something like this will happen. And whenever this equation does not hold, something like one of those or an infinite number of other possibilities are going to happen that don't actually work out. And you can actually go through and you can verify that with each of these. Notice here, um, your f of a is undefined. So that means this equation is not going to work because the right side doesn't even make any sense. Um, the limit actually does exist though, the limit as x approaches a of f of x. That is something you could find, let's say that's b. Right? So you could find the left side of the equation works, but the right side doesn't. It causes a discontinuity. In this case, f of a is defined. Um, in fact, let's call that b, let's call that c. That's equals to b. Um, the limit, though, does not exist uh, because the left and the right side don't match up. If you look at this one, f of a is defined. In fact, if I call this B and that one C, that's equal to C. And in fact, the limit exists. Limit as x approaches A of f of x also exists. And that would be B in this scenario. But uh, your B is not equal to C, so that equation doesn't hold. So each side of that equation individually actually works out, but they work out to something different. Um, that creates something like this. Um, here is a case where, um, again, f of a is defined to b, but limit does not exist. Right. Over here, uh, it's all fine though. You actually can find f of a and say that is b. If you actually find the limit as x approaches a of f of x, Turns out that is also B, and they're the same. Yeah? So, would you like to explain the difference between like, the one on the top right and the one on the bottom left, and why like, that one, the one that is, does not exist, and this one? Because as you approach from the right, oh, no, no, B is uh, the one on the top right. Right, so here the limit does not exist because the left-hand limit is B, the right-hand limit is C, so that does not exist. So they can be equal because this is a value, because it's a filled-in circle. So the output is actually B, but the limit isn't anything. Over here, 
the limit actually works. The limit will actually give you a value. It's going to be whatever the y component of this gap is. Because like right. Because if, if I'm approaching, getting closer and closer, then my y value gets closer and closer to this location. Right. However, the actual value of the function, what is the output? It's where the filled in point is. That's c. So the limit converges to b, but the actual output is c. Those don't match up. That creates a little a disruption there. Um, yeah. So, so and, and that being said, it's probably nice to think of it this way when it comes down to actually making some sort of computations. Um, you can kind of think of it in, in those stages. So, note. B continuous at A. Um, three things need to happen. Um, so one, f of A must be defined. And it should be some finite number, so you can't say it's infinity or anything. It's, it's some number. I can plug in A into my function, and the output is some number. Two, the limit as x approaches a of f of x must exist. And of course, uh, for a limit to exist, it might be necessary for you to look at one side at a time. So you know that the limit as you approach a from the left of f of x must exist, and, the lim and it must be equal to the limit as you approach a from the right of f of x. So both must exist. That's the second thing you need to work. And the third thing that you need to happen is that the results of 1 and 2 are equal. Right? Now, all of these must work. All three must hold. Any one does not work. It is discontinuous. At x equals a. So that's important. Now you will notice in the first example that I wrote here, step one doesn't work. F isn't defined. In the second one, uh, step one actually works, but step two doesn't, right? So it's automatically not continuous. Here, you'll notice that step one actually works, step two actually works, but step three doesn't actually work. Here, step one works, but step two doesn't work. So what's going to happen is whenever something is discontinuous, if there's a disruption in your function, it turns out one of those three things didn't happen. And once all of these three things happen, you're continuous. Um, so basically, you can even think of these as just steps you're going through. If I ever ask you, oh, is this function continuous? Or where is this function continuous? Go through the steps. Check what the value of the function is. Check what the limit is at that point, And check, are those two the same thing? If any one of these mess up, then everything gets messed up. You lose continuity. And continuity is important. Because a lot of the things that we want to do in calculus, you know, solve the rate problem, the error problem, all that good stuff, uh, we can only do that if we're looking at a continuous function. Where a function is not continuous, we can't really do any of that. So knowing when this works from when it doesn't is actually an important thing to know. Um, be able to give you like a formula or even a picture 
and you should be able to tell me where the thing is continuous versus where it's not continuous, and if it's not continuous, explain why. Um, but here, we're going to just do some uh, formula examples. These, the first one is the easiest in the sense that it's almost so silly you kind of don't really have to do anything. So I'll do that one and you guys can do the other. So um, you have this function, you want to check it's continuous. Basically you want to check those three things actually work out. Um, and you want to know where would it work out. So because it's y equals x squared, um, that's something you're very familiar with at this point. That's the parabola. Um, no obvious, no obvious issue. So you kind of expect that you know, there's no real point here to worry about. So what I would do is look at a general point. So let uh, let a be any number, any real number. Then one. What would f of a be? Well, we know how composite functions work. So if I plug like an a here, what it means is I replace the x with that a in it. So that's a squared. So that's defined. Second thing I would check is what is the limit as x approaches a of f of x? Well, this is just the limit as x approaches a of x squared. Now, it turns out that step one of our limit process would actually take care of that. You can literally just plug in the value. You won't divide by zero. You won't do anything. Um, but you can just see for any a, if you approach that from either side, you're getting closer and closer to the output a squared. And you realize so that makes sense to just call it, just plug in the number. That makes sense here. And three, you will see that one and two give the same value. So. This means that f of x is continuous at a. In fact, for any a, because my a isn't a specific number here, this is just actually a random uh, real number. So how you would actually express this, one way is to say that f is continuous on, and you state the interval, pretty much the entire real line. So that's minus infinity to infinity. Um, there's another way you can say this, as you might see in your textbook or something. 
uh, to just say if it's continuous for all real numbers between minus infinity and infinity, you can say f is continuous everywhere. I mean, that's, that's how we actually say it. Continuous everywhere. No matter where you are, that's actually going to work. You can actually plug in the value, and it'll actually be the same as the limit at any point on the graph x squared. Okay. So, Um, x squared is one small example in a whole host of examples, in a whole universe of things uh, called the elementary continuous functions. These functions are continuous on the other So it turns out that there are six functions in general that are continuous on their domains. And six types of functions. Uh, one is polynomials. X squared, y equals x squared is an example of a polynomial. Uh, two are rational functions. This is when you take ratio of polynomials. As long as you're not divided by zero, uh, this will actually work out. Three is radical functions. So you, when, you, you, when you start raising things to fractional powers that aren't integers, those guys are actually continuous on their domain. As long as you're not taking the, the, an even radical of a negative, that's going to actually work out. Uh, exponential functions are also continuous at every point in their domain. Something like that equation is actually going to hold. Um, five log functions. We spoke about exponentials and logarithms in the first, second lecture. Six trig functions are continuous. Now, of course, trig functions aren't actually in, we're not going to, not in this class. Now, turns out in a typical calculus course, these are all the types of functions you'll actually see. And it's good that they're all continuous. Um, these guys are like the six infinity stones of calculus. Like Everything gets built up from these. Um, go to calculus one, two, three. You go far as you want. Like At some point, you're looking at one of these functions or some combinations of them. Um, you can add them. You can multiply them. You can divide them. You can plug one into the other with composition. But all our continuous functions, the main examples we know of, they're all built up of guys like these. And if we can't see something built up of guys like these, we call it non-elementary. These are the building blocks, the atoms of our universe in calculus. Um, and y equals x squared is an example of one of these guys, the polynomials. Very nice functions, and uh, we like them a lot. We'll just get through a couple more examples here, and I'll probably leave the last thing for you. If you're looking at f of x equals x squared over 4 over x minus 2, then if you go to step 1 and say f of 2, you realize that f of 2 is undefined. So automatically means not continuous at 2. Otherwise, especially by what I just told you above, we're okay, right? So this is an example of a rational function. It is going to be continuous as long as we're, we're in the domain. We're not divided by zero. Um, so basically what this means is that f is continuous on pretty much the entire real line except that value 2. Minus infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. And that will be your answer for this one. It works everywhere except the point where we would divide by zero. A slight variation on B, and I'll have you guys do that one in D. 
but I'll just do C and then we'll get out of here. Slight variation on this. Sometimes, uh, we won't actually get to the situation where we divide by zero, but there are obviously some issues. Because again, if x is not 2, we're fine. But at x is 2, you have to examine that a little more closely. Because if x is, is not if x is not 2, it looks like this, and I'm not dividing by 0. It's continuous. Everything is great. At 2, what would happen? Well, 1. Is f of 2 defined? Yes, yeah. it's at 0. It's actually 0. So step 1 works out. Does the limit as I approach to exist? Can I, can I actually take this limit and get an answer? x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Yeah, we actually did that a bunch of times. Complete the square uh, difference of squares on the top. You'll be able to write this as x minus 2 times x plus 2. The x minus 2 doesn't cancel. And you plug in 2. That's actually equal to 4. So that actually works out. So you go to step 3. Now the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, that's 4. That happens to not be 0, which is equal to the value of the function. So this means not continuous at 2. And that means your f is continuous on, it's actually the same answer as before, minus infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. Yeah, how did you get 4 on uh, step number 2? Oh, well, uh, you would go through the limit steps. Try to plug in, you can't, so you try to simplify to plug in. Those would cancel. Then you would have oh, okay. All right, so, uh, x plus 2. Okay. Now I can plug in, so that's So here, step one actually works out, step two actually works out, but step three, they weren't the same, so it breaks. So this one isn't continuous everywhere, it's always continuous. Uh, do D and E, we'll start class with those tomorrow, and then move on. And, uh, post the quiz and the answers a little bit later, and you look over what you did. Huh? We're going to finish.